In the 1890s, a loose denominational alliance of congregations that had been independent was formed in Canada, and in 1922 they took the name of Christian Workers' Church of Canada. This was changed a few years later in 1925 to Associated Gospel Churches. In 1940, a group of Western Canadian churches joined them. Today, there are around 150 congregations in the AGC. I will be referencing the denomination's current statement of faith whenever possible. This statement was approved by a 94% vote in 2013. On some topics, though, the old statement of faith gives insights that the new one doesn't, so we'll occasionally refer to it with the understanding that it's no longer an official statement of the AGC's beliefs today. In their statement of faith, they affirm the Trinity, that Jesus was virgin-born, lived a sinless life, was crucified, raised bodily, and ascended to heaven, and will return. There are real angels, including fallen angels, including Satan. The statement of faith refers to two ordinances, baptism and the Lord's Supper. They are not means of salvation. Baptism is for believers only, not infants. In a position paper on baptism, the AGC has stated, We teach and practice baptism by immersion, but fellowship with believers baptized by other modes. Our church membership is open to believers regardless of the fact or mode of their baptism. The generally accepted view of the elements of communion is a symbolic or memorial view. The explanatory papers to the statement of faith refer to both baptism and communion as symbolic practices. On the scripture, AGC uses a 66-book canon and states of it, The Bible, both Old and New Testaments, is the complete word of God. As originally given, it is verbally inspired, without error, and entirely trustworthy. The Bible constitutes supreme authority in all matters of faith, teaching, and behavior. The Bible has Jesus Christ as its focus and fulfillment. On creation, the explanatory papers of the Statement of Faith say, By faith we believe, as clearly stated in Hebrews 11, that God exists and has created absolutely everything. Although this is not clearly spelled out in official documents, many in the AGC are skeptical of evolution. For example, the late AGC pastor Francis Humphrey wrote the book Origins and Redemption, which is described in the Amazon listing as accomplishing the following. The scientific credibility of the Genesis account of creation, as plainly read, is clearly established, and the implausibility of the evolutionary account is equally clearly established. On sin and its source, the statement of faith says, Human beings are created in the image of God. The first humans, Adam and Eve, were disobedient to the will of God, with the consequence that every aspect of their human nature became sinful and corrupt. Thus, being spiritually dead, they became subject to physical death and the power of Satan. The image of God is distorted in all humanity with the exception of Jesus, as we inherit a sinful nature at conception. Therefore, we are sinners by nature and by choice, alienated from God and under his condemnation. The statement of faith says on salvation, Redemption is accomplished solely by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was made to be sin and died in our place as an acceptable sacrifice to God. His atoning death is sufficient for all and effective for every person who repents and believes in him, resulting in a reconciled relationship with God. Salvation is available by grace through faith. This salvation is not our own doing, it is the gift of God. Salvation includes being declared righteous by God, justification, being transformed into the likeness of Christ, sanctification, and being fully restored to the image of God, glorification. This salvation, which includes our new birth and eternal inheritance, is kept by God's power. It is therefore impossible for the saved to lose their salvation. A position on issues like unconditional election and limited atonement is not stated, but most churches don't take the Calvinist position on these issues. Additionally, AGC churches don't teach a post-salvation entire sanctification experience. The AGC is not charismatic or Pentecostal, though their current statement of faith does not discuss the issue. In 1993, AGC made a statement that said, Church movements which manifest extra-biblical revelation and or the dominance of experiences such as physical healings, slaying in the spirit, speaking in tongues, signs and wonders, and teachings such as material prosperity or reconstructionism and dominion theology are not in harmony with our understanding of the Bible. We do not accept for ministerial position in our churches those who endorse such movements. We also recommend to our churches that they apply a similar policy for all leadership, e.g. teachers, church officers, etc. This statement is not currently on the AGC website. 
The pre-2013 statement of faith said, We believe that speaking in tongues and the working of miracles were sign gifts demonstrated in the early church to authenticate God's revelation through the apostles and to authenticate the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but no such signs give evidence of the baptism today, nor do they appear as a mark of spiritual maturity or of the filling of the Spirit. We believe that special divine revelation for authoritative scripture ceased with the apostolic age. It also said, There is one baptism with the Spirit, and it is into the body of Christ, but there are many fillings. Pentecost is an historical event and is not repeated. The current statement of faith says that Holy Spirit baptism is at the moment of salvation. Another statement in the former statement of faith opposes a common Pentecostal teaching on healing when it says, We believe that divine healing of the body is not in the atonement in the sense that salvation and forgiveness of sins are in the atonement. The suffering and death of Christ according to the New Testament was substitutionary, penal, and vicarious. It is nowhere taught in scripture that Christ died for the effects of sin, but for sin, and sickness is directly or indirectly the effect of sin. On end times, the statement of faith is premillennial, stating, At a time known only to God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ will return bodily and in glory, receive his own, and establish his earthly thousand-year reign. It also affirms a future bodily resurrection of the dead and judgment day, with eternal conscious punishment of the unsaved and eternal life for the saved, with God ruling over his kingdom of new heaven and new earth. A policy statement on the AGC website in 2006 on the pre-tribulation rapture said the following, The Associated Gospel Churches is free to admit persons to the ministry of the AGC who may not understand the necessity of a pre-tribulation rapture, but in so doing, the AGC does insist that a. they must hold to imminency, a literal interpretation of scripture, and a basic dispensational hermeneutic, b. they must recognize that the majority position of the AGC is a pre-tribulation rapture, and c. they must agree that this issue is not ever to become one of contention or division in our churches. This statement is no longer on the AGC website. AGC churches teach marriage between one man and one woman, and that the practice of homosexuality is sinful. In the church administration manual, the AGC suggests, as sample wording for a portion of a church's marriage policy, the following. Definition of marriage. We resolve that as a matter of belief, doctrine, and religious practice, our congregation reserves the term marriage for the covenant relationship between one man and one woman to the exclusion of all others. There is no denomination-wide statement on divorce or remarriage, but local congregations may set policies on this. The AGC stated in a 2002 document that, Divorce or a marriage to a divorcee are grounds for the revoking of ordained ministry status. On euthanasia, a position paper states, Active euthanasia is an act which results in the death of an affected person with or without his or her consent. Such action is in direct violation of God's command. The church administration manual suggests congregations have a policy of lifestyle and morality which bars people from employment at the church if they support abortion. AGC itself will not approve ministers who approve of abortion or homosexuality. There is no required worship style, but churches in the AGC are not liturgical. Some may be more traditional than others, but contemporary style is very common and contemporary praise music is used, for example, in their national conferences. The denomination does not have a public statement on alcohol use. A 2002 document stated, Ordination shall not be granted to any applicant who is in habitual non-medical use of any addictive substance. AGC has no statements on the topic of tithing. The view of the church is that it is made up of all redeemed people. Local churches are congregationally governed. For example, one congregation says in their constitution, The government shall be vested in the body of believers constituting the membership of the church, exercised at regular or special meetings, or through officers appointed or other duly constituted agencies, and according to this constitution as amended from time to time. Local churches voluntarily affiliate with AGC and may withdraw at will. AGC doesn't have any governing authority over the congregations or hold rights to their property. A doctrine and credential committee works with congregations in overseeing a credentialing process for ministers. Churches have elders, including pastors and deacons, and there is a church board. A position paper on women in ministry states, Women are to be encouraged to use their gifts and be involved in any ministry of local church life except for the office of ordained pastor slash elder with its leadership authority. Therefore, the AGC will not ordain women to pastoral ministry. The AGC is one of 43 affiliate member denominations of the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada. There are 147 churches currently listed in the AGC's online directory, 79 in Ontario, 22 in Alberta, 20 in Quebec, 15 in Saskatchewan, 7 in Manitoba, 3 in British Columbia, and 2 in Nova Scotia. 
If you're interested in learning more about Christian denominations, this channel, Ready to Harvest, is all about that topic. Subscribe to keep up to date with the latest videos.